Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tulisifu jina la Bwana. It's been a great 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 time. Imekuwa wakati mzuri mzuri mzuri. This whole week. Hii wiki yote. Since Sunday. Tangu Jumapili. And just as you would say that God has done great things for you. Na kama vile ungesema Mungu amekutendea mambo makuu. God has done great things for me. Mungu pia amenitendea mambo makuu. I also came. Pia nimekuja to meet him ili kuumbana na yeye i also came nimekuja to move to another level ili niende kiwango kingine so if you are saying kwa hivyo kama unasema that this conference ili kongamano has had a great impact on you limekuwa na ujazilio mwingi kwangu me too pia mimi amen amina and as you were saying the things you have learned na kama mkisema mambo ambayo umejifunza so have i hivyo vile vile nani and it is my prayer this morning na niombi langu asubuhi ya leo that those things that we have learned kwamba yale ambayo tumejifunza that we will not keep them to ourselves hatutajiwekea wenyewe but we will also commit them to other people bali tutakabidhi hata wengine we are accountable for that word that we have received. Tunawajibika kwa hilo neno ambalo tumepokea. Not only will it bear fruit. Wala tuhalitopata matunda. Not only will we build on this foundation. Wala hatutajenga tu kwa huu msingi. But Lord. Lakini Bwana, we are going out there. Tunaenda kule nje. Our hearts open. Mioyo yetu kimefunguka. To touch lives. Kuguza maisha. To teach them. Kuwafunza to bring this truth to them kuleta huu kweli kwa wao that which we have received freely from you holy spirit kile tulichopokea kutoka kwako roho mtakatifu tubuni we want to give it back pia tunataka kurejesha and we love you na tunakupenda and we love you lord na tunakupenda bwana this conference lord ni kongamano bwana has caused us to draw closer to you limefanya na likatuvuta karibu sana na wewe it is you we came for ni wewe tumekuja kwa sababu yako to draw close to you ili tukakukabiribie you are God to be revered. Wewe ni Mungu ambao unastahili kuinuliwa ama kuheshimiwa. We don't want to ever be want to be casual with you. Hatutaki kukuzoea. We don't want to take anything for granted. Hatutaki kuchukua vitu kwa uraisi. You see us as we are. Unatuona vile tulivyo. You are God of intimacy. Wewe ni Mungu ambao unataka uhusiano ndani. So we are ndani. surrendered. And we are tumechuachilia. Even today this day the fifth day. Siku ya leo ya tano. We are so so we stand in awe of your Tumasimama majesty. Kuku wako. We are ready to take it all in. Tutayari kuchukua yote. And you can count on us Lord. Na tunaweza wajibika Bwana. To go forth. Kuendelea. We in this our might. Katika huu uweza wetu. We submit ourselves to you. Tujinyenyekeza kwako. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Amina. You may now take your seats. Naweza keti kwenye viti vyenu. In the presence of God. Kwenye uwepo wake Mungu. And I want to say this in absentia to Ta our dear parents. Taka kusema hivi hata wazazi wetu wakiwa hawako. That it is such a great honor. Kwamba ni heshima kuu. For me too. Kwangu pia. That I would be here for Kwamba 5 days. Ningekuwa hapa kwa siku tano. And speak and teach na kufunza this day hii siku when i was ready to be taught wakati nilikuwa tayari kufunzwa so i want to say thank you so much nashukuru sana for this honor sababu ya hii heshima it is so humbling ni ya kunyenyekeza i don't have even words sina hata maneno and uh, because the bible says to whom much is given bila nasema yule ambaye amekabidhiwa mengi much more is required basi zaidi na wajibika kwa amen amina and so today na asubuhi ya leo basi we want to look at uh, the ending of his letter. Tunataka kuangalia kutamatisha kwa barua yake. Day 1 we looked at the overview. Siku ya kwanza tukaangalia tu kwa juu. And we've kind of flown over this uh, book. Na tumeweza kupitia kabisa. This letter. Hii maarifa barua. And now we want to look at the conclusion. Na sasa tunataka kuangalia tamati. Everything that has a beginning. Kila kilicho na mwanzo has an ending. Kina mwisho. So we are at Hebrews 13. Tuko katika Hebrews 13. And this was his conclusion concluding exhortations. Na hii ndio kutamatisha kwake yale aliyosema. Some things he repeats. Mambo mengine anarudia. To lay more emphasis. Ili asisitize zaidi. Others he introduces something that he had not touched on. Mengine analeta hata mambo ambayo hajaguzia. We'll just look at a couple of them. Tutaangalia tukakawa kiasi. Amen. Amina. Glory to God. Tukufu kwake Mungu. Now the writer begins his descent. So you know, he's been up there so he's descending now. Amekuwa pale juu na sasa anashuka anatua. He begins his descent by writing his his concluding is like the summary of everything that I have been saying to you. Ni kama tamati ya yote ambayo amekuwa akinena. 
And we were looking at a few verses there. Let's look at verse 1 and we can look uh, we can use NIV. Let brotherly love continue. Okay, so that was another so keep on keep on NIV. Keep on loving one another. As brothers and sisters as brothers and sisters. Keep on. Remember he introduced the issue, the, the issues of love. And he's already told them how important love is. That it's not just the labor, but it's coupled with love. So he says, keep on loving one another. Us Kama vile. As, Kama vile. as brothers and sisters. Kama ndugu na dada. So there are things we are not permitted to do. Kuna mambo to one another. Kumoja na mwingine. Because we are family. Kwa vile sini familia. Family. Familia. Keep on loving one another. Tuendele kupendana. As brothers and sisters. Kama ndugu na dada. Can you imagine? You are my brother. Fikiria wewe ni ndugu yangu. You are my sister. Wewe ni dada yangu. My brother. Wewe ni ndugu yangu. My sister. Wewe ni dada yangu. So he says keep on loving each other. Endele ni kupendana. As brothers and sisters. Kama ndugu na dada. Now, I was thinking. Nilikuwa na fikiria. The author is connecting this love for one another's brothers and sisters with our love for God. So when we fail to love one another, we therefore erect barriers between us and God. There is a relationship. You see, we are all one. Sisi sote ni moja. We are all one in God. Sote ni moja ya so mungu. when we have a problem with each other, na shida moja na we automatically have a problem with God. Mara moja na mungu. But we don't see that. Lakini hatuoni hivo. Satan doesn't want us to see. Shetani ataki tuone. He thinks that it can be okay. As long as I can come to church and lift up holy hands. Not possible. So we erect, we also affect our relationship with God. The barriers have a direct negative impact hizi, on our enthusiasm hizi vizu, hizi mambo of the things of God. Mambo ya mungu. So when we see ourselves growing cold, baridi, just begin to check how we are relating. Vile so and so offended me. And you know, Jesus said, Yesu it is obvious Ni as long as we are in this earth, wote tumo humu dunia, as long as we are in this one family, moja, we will moja. offend each other. So that's not the issue. Hiyo siyo jambo. The issue of offense Hili jambo la ama kuku, kuku is expected. But it is what we do with the offense. Ni na hayo we don't let it stay. We don't ha. dwell on it. Tusikae ndani yake. We've got to quickly deal with it. Lazima kwa haraka tuyondoe. Quickly deal with it. Kwa haraka tuyondoe. So it has a direct negative impact on our enthusiasm and our love for the things of God. And of importance then is that it affects our relationship with God. So he says, continue loving one another as brothers and sisters. And you see, if we think of ourselves as brothers and sisters, you know, think about your little brother or little sister at home. How, how many times have they offended you? Ah. So many times. Mara mingi. But how many times do you let it go? Lakini unawacha yuende marangapi. How many times do you let it go? Marangapi unamsamehe. For the sake of your dad. Kwa sababu ya baba yako. For the sake of your mom. It's the same thing. Kwa sababu hivyo hivyo. So continue. Endelea. Loving one another. Kupenda moja na mwingine. As brothers and sisters. Kama ndugu na dada. So the author strongly emphasizing on the word continue. Mwaindishi anasisitiza kuendelea. And through the entire book. The, through the entire um, a, a book of Hebrews. You see, that thing of continuing has something to do with endurance. For you to continue, it means it is to endure. Sometimes it may take a little longer. When your brother or your sister is not understanding you. When they are misunderstanding you. When they are not appreciating you. When they are oppressing you. It may take a little longer. But continue. 
continue lakini endelea endure kuvumilia endure kuvumilia endure and Vumilia. that has been the theme of the, one of the themes of this his writing hiyo ndiyo imekuwa moja ya maondoko wa hii maandiko holding then he remember he was talking about doctrine proper doctrine ana kufunza ku mafunzo ya maana holding to that proper doctrine kushikilia mafunzo mazuri don't allow false teaching usiruhusu mafunzo mabaya to carry you yaje kwako but also Lakini holding kwa. on shikilia to that behavior kwa hiyo tabia of brotherliness ya undugu it is consistent with god's character and your belief inasisitiza katika mwenendo wa mungu na hata amia because if you believe in god ukiamini katika mungu then we will look like him basi utafanana naye brotherly love upendo wa ndugu can you imagine how much god has been enduring you fikiria vile mungu amekuvumilia how many times do we let him down fikiria wakati ule ambao tunapenda mungu never gives up lakini yeye akati tamaa he never gives up on us it's the same thing ni vile vile and the author is saying he also urges them mwandishi anauliza pia to endure as one wavumilie kama moja who at any moment ambaye katika wakati wote you may be crossing over to the heavenly city utakuwa ukivuka kwenda mji wa mbinguni because he's been talking about zion amekuwa kinena kuhusu zayuni in chapter 12 katika maana 12 and so he's saying at every moment let's be thinking about that let's keep that in our minds wacha tuweke hili katika fikira zetu keep that in your minds he's telling them fikira fikira zenu anawaambia so you have got to do it lazima mutende hivi loving one another kupendana is a command jesus gave ni amri ambayo yesu alipea he said that in John 13:34 Sema Yohana 13:34 That we must love one another. Lazima tupendane. Let's look at that scripture. John 13:34. These were the words of Jesus. So the author of Hebrews is just echoing. Mwandishi wa anajibu tu hapa. And can you imagine my brothers and sisters this morning? Ya ndugu na dada asubuhi ya leo. It's a commandment. Ni amri. Ni amri. We, are, we cannot debate it's ha- non negotiable. Hakuna kuongea, hakuna masemezano. Concerning our love for each other is There is no argument. Kuhusu upendo wa moja na mwingine hakuna kujibizana. John 13:34. Yohana 13:34. A new command I give you love Amri, one another. Amri mpya nawapatia mpendane moja na mwingine. As I have loved you so you must. Kama I... vile mwapenda lazima. <laughs> There's no choice or alternative. Hakuna lingine, hakuna we, jiaziada. We are commanded to love one another. Tumeamrishwa kupendana. So the first concluding point. Katika hali ya kutamatisha moja. Our author. Ya mwandishi wetu. Is that He is urges them. Anawauliza. Love your brothers and sisters. Penda ndugu yako na dada yako. Do not discriminate. Msilete ubaguzi. Do not have favorites. Msiwe na wale ambao mtapendelea. That's why it is brotherly. Ndio maana ni undugu. Love. Upendo wa undugu. Verse 2. Ya pili. He he says this to them. Anawaambia hivi. Verse 2 th- uh, Hebrews 13. Abrania 13. Verse 2. Aya ya pili. Do not forget to entertain strangers. Usisahau kuweza kusaidia wale wageni. For by so doing, kwa kufanya hivyo, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Wengine wameonyesha ukarimu kwa malaika bila kujua. Remember his his writing, he's addressing himself to people who know who are very familiar with the old testament anaandikia watu ambao tayari wanajua mambo ya gono la kale and how angels were used of god na vile malaika walitumika na mungu and remember he's also told them the position of angels naambia amewaambia sehemu ya malaika in relation to the son katika kuhusiana na mwana so he says don't forget lakini anaambia sahau don't forget musisahau don't forget musisahau do not forget musisahau So he's telling them this And this brotherly love who upendo wa ndugu must go beyond lazima uende zaidi those in our christian community wale walio katika jumuiya yetu ya ukristo those ones who are there wale wako pale some may be within our community wako katika jumuiya yetu but they are not within our circles lakini hawako katika uhusiano wetu we don't relate with them hatuhusiani na wao to those those around as that we even do not know them pengine hata hatuwajui maybe they are beyond our regions pengine wako zaidi ya vitongoji vyetu maybe our tribes pengine hata zaidi ya mila zetu maybe our social status ama hali zetu za ki za adili brotherly love is extending hospitality to people we are not comfortable with upendo ni kuonyesha ukarimu kwa watu ambao pengine hata hatusikii tukiwa sawa tukiwa kanao we are not comfortable with them hauski ukiwa sawa ukiwa karibu na wao don't forget anasema usiosahau don't forget usisahau those strangers how wageni people How? we are not comfortable with ambao pengine hatusikii tukiwa salama tukiwa pamoja usually we do not make them friends sasa zingine hatuwafanyi kuwa rafiki 
So his, his, his eyes now, he wants his readers to go beyond that circle of friends. You know, those that we are not even comfortable to relate with them because in our minds and in our hearts, they are strangers. We, we are never even led to even bless them. Hata you know, we can never hear any voice leading you that direction to bless them with anything. Even missing them, you, your heart cannot even miss. They don't come into your mind. And in today's culture, you can never be led to invite them to be your FB friends. No friend invite for those ones are the ones who are just passing. How ni wale tunapita? Those ones. How unapita? Those ones. How? They are outside. Wako kule nje. They are strangers. Wao ni wageni. Author says, uh, what he's saying to, anasema, in this uh, verse, haya you see, God's ways are not our ways. Jia za mungu sizo zetu. Those you regard as outsiders, Wale those wageni. you regard as strangers, Wale unasema wako uko ha, he now decides to use them <laughs> as an angel. Kama malaika. Ah. He can use any of them. He will use them. Do, do you remember when Leah was the despised one? She's kind of a stranger. How did she end up in our marriage? Ten? That's the one he opened the womb. Those ones. How? Strangers. Says, Don't forget. Sister, how? Don't forget Usisahau. to entertain strangers. Hata wageni. By so doing, Wakipu. people have entertained angels without Kuk. knowing it. Wageni hata bila kujua. That time in Abraham's uh, time, Katika siku za Abrahamu, three people appeared at a distance around his house. Wata watatu waka wakua or his tents. Mahali, they lived in tents. Na hema lake. And he was not familiar with any of them. Na haku wajua hata moja wako. But you see that hospitality. Lakini huo ukarimu. He extends and says, come in. Haka wambia karibuni. It turned out that one of them was God himself. Ika wamoja wao ni mungu mwenyewe. It was a time of his visitation. Ili kwa wakati wakutembele wako wake. In your seasons of visitation. Katika msimu wako wakutembele wako. God can use anybody. Mungu waneza tumia yoyote. Sometimes you think he will use this one. He may not. Are you with me, church? So this is what this uh, author is telling them. Don't forget. He's winding up. He's summarizing. He's saying this is critical. This is important. And to us, it is important. Do you remember one time David and Ziklag, their, their camp was was attacked by Amalekites. And after he sought God, that is that you find in First uh, Samuel chapter 30. Samuel 30. And so that time, he seeks God and God says, yes, pursue the enemy. So on their way, ready to, at, and to find this devil who has stolen their wives and everything. They, they find a beaten guy almost dying. A stranger. You remember what he did? David made a decision. He said, let's minister to this one. They decided not to leave him. He would have been left there and died. But do you know that man? Was God's angel? He's the one who led them to exactly where their wives were. So let's not ignore Let's not ignore. So one of the Jewish strong beliefs was in hospitality. So the author is Dealing with something they are familiar with. But because their hearts have grown cold. They also have not been able to extend hospitality. So they believed, Jewish people believed that hospitality is one of the six things that will be rewarded in heaven. So the second concluding point. 
extend hospitality kuonyesha ukarimu extend brotherly love peana upendo wa ndugu to strangers kwa wageni as god would use some of them kama vile mungu aketumia wengine wao to be your angels of destiny kuwa malaika wako wa hatima In other words don't judge. Usihukumu. Don't judge. Usihukumu. Even the way they look. Hata vile wanaoneka. The way they speak. Vile wananena. Some of them may be very uneducated. Wengine hawana kile masomo. Some of them may have nothing. Wengine hawana chochote. But God. Lakini Mungu. Is God. Yeye ni Mungu. Amen. Amina. Now let's look at verse 3. Wacha tuangalie hata tatu. Verse 3. Haya tatu. Hebrews 13 verse 3. Hebrews 13 verse 3. Haya tatu inasema Remember kumbuka those in prison wale walio gerezani as if you were their fellow prisoners ni kama wewe umefungwa jela na wao and those who are mistreated na wale ambao umetumiwa vibaya as if you yourselves were suffering ni kama wewe pia unaadhirika he is taking it to another level anapeleka kiwango kingine remember those who are in prison kumbuka walio gerezani remember those who are mistreated and how do you do that kumbuka wale wamedhiriwa utafanya vipi put yourself in their shoes jiweke katika sipali pao you yourself wewe mwenyewe If you were to empathize kama ungewazuhurumia imagine hebu utafakari that it were you ingekuwa ni wewe because the way you will do it then utatenda wakati ule is going to be different ndivyo itakuwa tofauti says put yourself in their shoes anasema jiwekeni mahali pao imagine imagine yourselves in their circumstances fikiria wewe mwenyewe ukiwa katika hali zao and in doing so na katika kutenda vile they shall be able to love them better waweza kuwapenda zaidi and sympathize better na hata kuwahurumia zaidi and empathize better na kuharumia zaidi because they put themselves in their shoes kwa vile umejiweka mahala pao you know and this is very practical na hii basi ni ya maana sana that you, we can go you can actually sympathize with the situation and you go unaweza hurumia jambo na wewe when you are there lakini ukiwa pale and we were having a conversation this morning with pastor david and he, we were saying how we go to people that are mourning wanasema na pastor daud vile unaenda kwa watu ambao pengine wanaomboleza and you know you are there you you, you, you the usual you know it's like a, a, a tradition for us eh? kama basi itikadi so, kwetu become like a custom but then even when you're there even the, the words that you use maneno unayotumia it is so obvious that you have not imagined yourself it's still fikiria. them bado ni wao you're not saying it usemi you know you just go there and we are so insensitive and say you know Nasema. you know we, we are actually here to celebrate hallelujah tuko hapa kusherekea hallelujah We are not here to mourn. Hatuko hapa kuomboleza. All things happen together for good. Mambo yote yatendeka kwa wema. Have you really? Umkweli? Are you in their shoes? Uko katika viatu vyao. That's what he's saying here. Hivyo ndivyo anasema hapa. Put yourselves. Jiweke. As though you yourself. Ni kama wewe mwenyewe. Are suffering. Unapitia ile hali. so quiet here umetulia sana hapa now the jewish christians gave sacrificially wayahudi walipeana dhabihu ya kujitolea to their fellow christians who were in prison that was something they did because remember they were very hospitable kumbuka walikuwa wakarimu hata kwa wale walikuwa gerezani they actually used to even raise money walikuwa hata wanafanya mchango to raise their bail ili waweze kuwalipia ile ambao wametozwa because in those days it was siku. so usual for christians to be imprisoned for their faith ilikuwa ni kawaida kuwa katika gereza kwa sababu ya imani yao that is the addressing hiyo ndio mateso anayonena and so we are being told put yourself in their shoes jiweke katika mahala pao because we are one body kwa vile sisi ni mwili mmoja when one hurts moja akiumia we are all hurting sote tunaumia so he tells them anawaambia remember them kwa kumbuke and i believe this day nakumbuka siku ya leo that this too is for us hivyo pia ni kwetu so the third concluding point ya tatu kutamatisha from the author kutoka kwa mwandishi remember these are concluding exhortations kumbuka hii ni maneno ya kutamatisha he says care kujali be careful care kuwa kujali kushughulikia ama be one that care. you know there are people that are so removed kuna watu ambao wamejiondoa sana like like for example when you're watching news or you're watching you're reading uh what the, the updates on social media kiangalia mambo katika mtandao and you, and, and you hear somewhere in moranga some village huko nasikia pale moranga kule there was a landslide and kulikuwa na maporomoko wa ardhi 
children and families were buried. Na watoto na familia wa kazikwa. Oh we just go like this. Oh, okay. Nasema sawa. News number 1 has Yon passed. Ya kwanza imepita. Kun careless Ay, now. Uh, this woman her child was killed. Mwanaye aliwawa. You know it starts there. Ina sta, inaanza pale. Inaanza pale. So pali. let's what is the state of our heart? God's heart is so loving. Mungu moyo wake unapenda. He even cares Anajali. for those that do not know him. Hata kwa wale hawamjui. So that's why he says so the third concluding point is about care. Tu ya tatu ni kujali. Being compassionate for each other because we are one body. Kwa vile sisi ni mwili moja. We are one body. Sisi ni mwili moja. So let's look at verse 4. Tuangalie aya ya Hey, he goes to something he had not touched on. Anaenda kwa kitu hajaguza. Marriage. Ndoa. Should be honored by all. Lazima heshimiwe na wote. Out of nowhere. He kutoka tu mahali. He throws that in there. Anaingiza pale. Marriage. Ndoa. Should be honored by all. Not all. Those in it. Those in it. And those who are not in it. Those who are in it and, and ran out. By all. By all. Let's finish first. And the marriage bed. Nakitanda chandoa. Kept pure. For God will judge. The adulterer. Anaezini. And all the sexually immoral. Let's look at that scripture on, with KJV. Marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled. But who among us? Hey, the words are. Mm -hmm. You know ho. You know what it means. Oh. Yeah. Mm. An adulteress. God will judge. Mungu atawa he throws adi. that one right there. In Anaweka the middle. Ndani. You wonder where is it going, coming? Inatoka, inaenda wapi? Right there. Hapo. It means it's important. Ni ni it's one of his concluding exhortations. Ni moja ya yes. Now, what he wants them to know Kile wajue. is marriage is God's vision ni mandoa, ni maone ya mungu. and dream. Na ndoto. Marriage Ndowa. is God's vision. Ni maono ya mungu. It did not come from man. Kwa mtu. It is God's. Ni mungu. He is the architect. He is the designer. He is the manufacturer. Everything about marriage. Kila kitu it came from God. He wants his readers to understand that. Wasomi wake waelewe. And because it came from God. Na kwa vile kwa mungu. God commands that it must be honored. Lazima it must be respected. Lazima it came from him. It is his idea. He uses it. It is his instrument. It is his vessel. So he's saying, that means that the joining of a man and a woman together in marriage is honorable and it is pleasing to God. Honorable and pleasing to God. And in marriage, there are vows. Na katika ndoa kuna kueka nadiri. There are vows. Kuna kueka kiyapo. Because these are two people that come together. Ni watu wawilo na kuja pamoja. To come into covenant. Kuja katika agano. And covenant. Na agano. And remember this author has talked a lot about covenant. They um, knew the old, everything had a uh, covenant was about relationships. Wanajua agano ina husiana na husiano. And there was, you were expected to be committed to the covenant. Unatarajiwa kueka lile agano. So marriage vows. Kwa ipo ndoa. They imply two things. That this marriage bond between these two people is honorable. Is honorable. Is honorable. Therefore, it must not be despised. It's a command. It is honorable. And it must not become despised. Must not. Isiwai. Must not Isiwai. be despised. So marriage must be honored. Kwa ifo, heshima, lazima, heshima. Marriage must not be despised. Lazima, ndoa, that means he's telling his 
readers. Anaambia wasomi wake. You cannot look down on it. Hamfai kuidharau. You cannot. Hamwezi. It came from God. Ilitoka kwa Mungu. It's holy thing. Mitakatifu. You cannot look down on it. Hamfai kuidharau. Neither can you be casual with it. Wala haichafai kuchukuliwa na mzaha. Remember from the overview these people have been casual with the things of God. Hawa watu wamekuwa na mzaha na mambo ya Mungu. So of course it extends to marriage. Basi naenda hata katika ndoa. If you are casual with the altar. Kama una mzaha na madhabahu. You be casual with the marriage. Utakuwa na mzaha pale hata ndoani. Says don't be casual with it. Anasema usiwe na mzaha. You know why? Unajua kwa nini? Because Christ is honored. Kwa sababu Kristo ameheshimika. Or Christ is dishonored. Kristo anakosa kuheshimika. Through a Christian sexual behavior. Kutumia tabia za ngono za Mkristo. Hiyo it has to be written. Hiyo lazima iandikwe. Christ is either honored. Anaheshimika Kristo. Or Christ is dishonored. Ama anakosa kuheshimika. By a Christian sexual behavior. Katika tabia za ngono za Mkristo. That which you think is in the secret. Kile unafikiria kwamba kiko katika siri. It touches Christ. Inaguza Kristo. Your honor and respect of Christ. Heshima yako na vile unamheshimu Kristo is affirmed. Inahakikishiwa through your sexual purity. Kupitia utakatifu wako wa ngono katika hali yako ya ngono. Utakatifu katika hisia za ngono ama katika njia za ngono. Your respect and how you honor him is affirmed through your sexual purity whether you are married or unmarried so he also refers to the marriage bed in that verse 4 this this the author implies sexual intercourse this this marriage bed is sexual intercourse he no hapa basi na usisha mambo not a bed for 4 by 6 or 3 by 6 or 2 and nothing like that si kitanda tu bure is the sexual intercourse that's what he's talking about kitendo kinachotendwa pale undefiled kisiwekwe najisi he also talks about undefiled we saw that in kjv version kisitiwe najisi author implies pure and sincere utakatifu na ile hali ya ukweli pure utakatifu and sincere na ukweli pure utakatifu na ukweli pure and sincere utakatifu na ukweli so sexual intercourse hiyo hali ya ngono is a no go no go zone ni mahali ambapo ufai kuenda for the unmarried kwa wale ambao hajaolewa in the kingdom of god katika ufalme wa mungu i said loud nasema kwa sauti Sexual intercourse is a no-go zone. I say sexual intercourse is a no-go zone. I say sexual intercourse is a no-go zone in the kingdom of God. Yesterday we were taught about the behavior. That is one of them. Consistent with our belief. Which means ikubanisha kwamba it's only for the married only. Ni wale tu wameoa ama wameolewa. If you want it, get married. Olewa ama oa. I mean simple. Ni raisi. The author then distinguishes Mwandishi hapa anatofautisha fornicators. Wale ambao wanafanya wanazini. In one version it says fornicators is another sexual immoral they are the same. Wazinifu na hiyo hali pia ni sawa wote. In KJV homongers they are all the same. Fornicators sexual immoral and hom and homongers are the same. Wote ni sawa. And even the adulterers. Na hata wale wanafanya This author says God will judge. Mungu anasema atawahukumu. Remember he's the consuming fire. Yeye ni moto uchomao. If they do not repent. Kama hawatatubu. The issue is not if that happens. Hali si kama itafanyika. It is what you do. Ni kile unatenda. After that. Baada ya hayo. Are we together church? Kwa pamoja kanisa. If they don't. Kama hawataweza. They don't repent. Basi kama hawatatubu. Fornicators are guilty of unlawful sexual intercourse because they are not permitted and they are not authorized. Adulterers are guilty of unlawful sexual intercourse with someone else's spouse. So these are illicit relationships. 
Fornicators are guilty of, someone, of, of breaking someone else's vow of chastity until marriage, of, of staying away from marriage until uh, staying away from sex until marriage. So if these two people, they are not married and they engage in sexual intercourse, this one, Hawa. one of them Moja or wao. the other, Ama they are guilty of breaking, the, of, of breaking the other person's sexual purity ya ule use, wa and Wangono. they will be judged Na if they do not repent. Kama hawata tubu. And you know, repenting is not going to church and saying, oh, sorry. Kutubu si kusema pole. It is a complete Ni kabisa, ukabisa, turning your back. Kuba, kuondu, ku, kupindua mgongo wako. Completely kabisa with your roots. Na mizizi yako. Completely turn kabisa, around. Kabisa. So you can't say that happened and then now you're still playing around. Utasema hiyo metendeka na bado unacheza cheza. Not possible. Aiweze kani. Adulterers are guilty of breaking their own marriage vows because they are married to someone else. And I love the way Jesus nailed it. Let's look at that. Matthew 5, 27 to 28. He hit it on the nail. Matthew 5, 27, 28, NIV version. NIV version. Thank you very much. Asante sana. You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. Because it, is, it was in the law. The, the, the Jewish Christians who are familiar. Verse 28. But I tell you that anyone. Hey. Anyone. Who looks at a woman. Lastfully. Has already. Tiari committed adultery with her, Nae. not in the lodging, si katika chumba chakulala. in the heart. Katika moyo. Lastfully. Hiyo hali ya kutamania. And we need to deal with lust. Na lazima tukabiliane na hiyo hali ya kutamania, ma'am. You see the world that we are living in today, katika dunia mbao tunaishi ndani yake, it's so sensual. Iko na jambo hilo. A commercial, a, a, just a simple commercial advertising they will bring a sexy looking type of a woman there. The power of suggestion. It is sown in our spirit. And in our mind, in a flash. So we are surrounded. The world dunia that we are in is full of sexual immorality everywhere. everywhere. Kila mahala. It is in the atmosphere. Iko katika ha, eh, anga. So as a Christian, Kwa hivu kama mkristo, and as a believer, na kama muaminio, and as the bride of Christ, na kama, um, 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 that is preparing yes. for him, we must deal with that. Lazima na hilo. And you know we know ourselves. Na we know ourselves. Tunajijua. We know ourselves. Tunajijua. We know ourselves. Tunajijua. We know ourselves. Tunajijua. We know. Tunajijua. So the fourth concluding point. This is what the author is saying. It's an exhortation. And I want us to do it practically. If you're seated to an unmarried, next to an unmarried person. So first of all, find them. Are you unmarried or married? If you don't know. If you're seated next to your spouse, it's okay. You already know they're married. But if, just look behind. If there's somebody, no one next to you, move to. Remember we are brothers and sisters. So if you, know, if you don't know what is their side, are you which side are you? Yeah, so then tell them this. Eh? Tell them, honor Christ. Heshimu Christo. Honor Christ. Heshimu Christo. By keeping your marriage vow. Kwa kuweka na zako za now, now that one, you are saying, if, you're, if the person is married, Kama mtu no, first of all, let's do to the ones who are not married. Wale so tell olewa. them, honor Christ. Wambie, heshimu Christo. Are you telling them? Honor Christ. Heshimu Christo. By keeping your marriage vow. Kwa kueka na zako to stay away until marriage. 
kuondokea ama kukaa kando hadi wakati utaoa ama utolewa it is a vow ni nadhiri you haven't gone to the altar hujaenda kwenye madhabahu to say it kusema but you did it to the lord lakini umefanyia bwana when you gave your life to jesus christ you said i give you my heart sema nakupatia moyo wangu i give you my soul roho yangu it was a vow ni nadhiri uliweka Let's say it again. Wacha tuseme tena. For young people. Kwa watu vijana wetu. Say honor Christ. Mwambie heshima Kristo. By keeping your marriage vow. Kwa kuweka nadhiri yako ya ndoa. To stay pure. Kukaa ukiwa mtakatifu. Sexually. Ki hali ya ngono. Until hadi wakati utakapoa. Now if you sit up next to a married man. Kama umekaa karibu na mtu ameolewa ama ameoa. Tell them honor Christ. Mwambie heshima Kristo. By keeping your marriage bed. Kwa kuweka kitanda chako cha ndoa. And defiled. Kikiwa hakina najisi. You know why this is important? Can you imagine the author brings it as a conclu- in his conclusion. Ameileta katika utamatisho wake. He doesn't know maybe he will never write to them again. Pengine hataandikia tena. These are people who he will never meet. They are Awa scattered wa. all over. Hata kutana nao wako kila mahala. They have already been killed. Tayari wanauawa. But this is his last word. Lakini maneno yake ya mwisho. How important it is. Ni maana vipi? How important it is. Vipi ni maana kwetu? So we must look at scripture. Lazima tuangalie maandiko. Let's look at uh, Revelation 22. Ufunue 22. 12 to 16. 12 hadi 16. That's important to God. Ni maana sana kwake Mungu hivyo. And more important to us who are being prepared as a bride. Na zaidi kwetu sisi ambao tunaandaliwa kama biharusi wa Yesu. Look I am coming soon. Tizama naja hivi karibuni. My reward is with me and Zawad. I will give it to each person. Zawadi yangu iko nami na nitapatia yeye yote yule. According yuye. to what they have done. Kulingana na matendo yao. I am the alpha and the omega, the, the first al- and the last. Alpha mimi na omega mwanzo na mwisho. The beginning and the end. Mwanzo na hata mwisho. Blessed are those. Barikiwa ni wale who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life wanaosha kazi zao ili wakae na mti wa uhai and may go through the gates into the city wapitie malango waingie katika mji outside inje are the dogs kuna hey, maumbwa these are not that nini that, that dog si umbo you know, we, the ones we give names like nini si ule tunapatia simba ama what chui bruno, bruno. chui What about those two other pet ones? This, this, they even have girls names. Kuna hata tujina You know the very kuche kuche sweet thing. Kuchu, kuchu, kuchu. We're not the Apana. author is not talking about those dogs. Aneni kusema how? I tell you. Na kuambia. These they are spiritual dogs. Kuna <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god. Hallelujah. Look at that scripture. Tiziama hiyo maana. Those who practice magic arts. Wale ambao wanafanya mambo hayo ambao wa chawi wa rogi wa rogi wa ganga wa ganga those ones. Hayo. The sexually immoral wale wazinifu kingono same level kiwango kile kile the murderers wauaji so a sexually immoral cannot say oh look yes. at that man he murdered the idolaters wale ambao wanafanya uzinzi we're going to look at idolatry shortly tangalia uzinzi baadaye and everyone who loves and practices falsehood na mtu yoyote ambaye anapenda na anafanya uongo verse 16 verse uh, yeah that's 16 up till there the outside are dogs kule nje kuna maumbwa that's okay verse 16 let's look at that hmm. i jesus have sent my angel to give you this testimony yesu nimetuma malaika kuwaletea ushuhuda for the churches wa makanisa i am the root mzizi. and the offspring of david mwanzo wa daudi and the bright morning star na, He has spoken. Amenena. So you can't make it anything, you know. Fanya no, you know, I'm emotionally, oh, you know, involved. You know, you know this guy in the office. You know when he speaks to me. You know the way my husband treats me. You know this man. Just bring Hey! Outside are the dogs. Inje ni maumbo. Are we together? Tuko pamoja. Let's deal with last. Tukabiliane na hii hali ya tamaa. The bride of Christ. Let's look at verse 5. Ana 5. Verse 5. A 5. He brings in another one. Analeta ingine. He not touched on this. Hajaguza pia. But it's important. Lakini ya maana. Keep your lives free from the love of money. Wekeni maisha yenu huru kutokana na upendo wa pesa and be content with what you have na mtosheleke na kile mlicho nacho because god has said never will i leave you never will i forsake you mungu amesema sitawaacha wala sitawapungukia remember paul had warned about the love of money which is the root of all evils first timothy 6:10 paul alikuwa amesema kuhusu upendo wa pesa 
Because God does not want us to lack any essential thing. Mungu hataki tukose chochote cha maana. He's ready to provide everything we need. Ako tayari kutolea chochote tunahitaji. But he usually does not provide us with more than we need. Lakini hatutoali zaidi ya kile tunahitaji. Very important for you to know that. Kitu cha maana kujua hivyo. So now greed kwa hivyo itamaa ama hii tamaa eh tama, greed hii tamaa is seeking for more than we need ni kutaka zaidi ya kile tunahitaji a greedy person is an idolater mtu mlafi ni mtu ambaye ni mzizi a worshipper of money ni mtu ambaye anaabudu pesa why kwa nini because he has put his wealth ameweka utajiri wake and his possessions na vitu vyake in the place of god mahala pake mungu and for your reference kwa wewe tu kutu Ephesians 5:5 Ephesians 5:5 right those scriptures there are andika powerful andika wa in Colossians 3:5 na wa Colossia 5:3 3:5 sexual immoral wale wazizi the sexual immoral wale wazizi wa idolaters greedy people watu ambao ni walafi are all on the same level wote wako kiwango kimoja they're in the same category wako katika kiwango kimoja in the eyes of god machoni pake mungu the greedy i are idolaters walafi ni kama tu wanzizi because they worship money kwa vile wanaabudu pesa or their possessions ama vitu vyao instead of god badala ya mungu now the person who has a love for money mtu aliye na upendo huu wa pesa begins to love god less and less anaanza kumpenda mungu kidogo na kidogo and his worldly possessions more and more na vitu vyake vya kidunia zaidi na zaidi remember what jesus said you can't love both love mungu and money at the same level yesu anasema uwezi penda pesa na mungu pamoja and those who love money wale wanapenda pesa they pierce themselves with many griefs as paul told timothy wanajichoma na majonzi mengi kama vile paulo aliambia timothy griefs of worry and anxiety majonzi ya kujali na hata ile hali ya kutoshuleka you know why kwa nini they are always afraid of losing wanaogopa wakati wote kupoteza pesa they are never at peace hawako katika amani they are never happy hawana furaha they are never content hawatosheleki with what they have na kile walicho nacho because they always want more kila wakati wanataka zaidi they always want more wanataka zaidi kila so the author is telling them muandishi anawaambia be content with what you have tosheleka na kile ulicho nacho be content with what you have na kile ulicho nacho and even jesus emphasized on the same na yesu anasisitiza kile kile he emphasized on contentment anasisitiza kutosheleka in matthew 6:31 to 30 3 for your reference for your own reference Matthew 6:31-33 the, the author of the book of of chapter Proverbs chapter 30 katika medhali 30 Yeah the man is called Agur ben Jake I don't know how you pronounce it it's a Hebrew name Ni neno hilo la Kiebrania Agur ben Jake Agur ben Jake something like that He didn't want to miss God. Hakutaka kukosa Mungu. And he didn't want to be greedy. Na hangi ataka kuwa mlafi. So he prayed for himself. Kwa hivyo akajiombea. And he prayed a prayer. Akaomba ombi. Oh God. Mungu wangu. Don't give me too much. You can read that. You see what he prayed for himself. Taona vile alijiombea. Godliness with contentment. Kuwa na uungu na kutosheleka is great gain. Ni zawadi kubwa. Great gain. Zawadi kubwa. Great gain. Zawadi kubwa. God will ensure Mungu atahakikisha you never lack. Hautakosa. What you need. Kile unahitaji. So what we need to deal with greediness. You know that link thing of looking at what you don't have. Hiyo ulafi kutafuta kile hauna. Is committed. Unajitolea, anajitolea. Is committed to give you what you need. Kukupatia kile unahitaji. And you know Jesus is not coming for a greedy bride. Yesu haji kwa kanisa ambalo lina ulafi. Let me tell you a Christian can never be satisfied with himself. Mkristo hawezi jitoshelesha yeye mwenyewe. Because if you a christian mkristo because you'll always look you'll always see what you don't have utaona wakati wote kile hauna so you so you will always i don't have this sina hichi i don't have that sina kile i don't have the other sina kile kingine but we we are told to be content lakini tunaambiwa tosheleke with what god has given na kile mungu amekupatia there are christians who don't even enjoy kuna wakristo hata hawafurahi what they have been given kile wamepatiwa because they always see kwa vile wakati wote wanaona what they do not have kile hawana so they cannot even appreciate hawakubali hata what god has already given them kile mungu amewapatia because their prayer is always for what you do not have hawana paul said in Paolo. in Phil, in, in philippians 4:11 kasema katika wa philip pia ine i have learned in whatever state i am to be content nimejifunza katika hali yote niliyo kutosheleka and then the last line of uh, that verse ya mwisho hiyo andiko tunasoma verse yeah he says I will, because i will never leave you never forsake wala sitawaacha sitawabudu god has promised mungu ameahidi god has promised his presence ameahidi uwepo wake will always be with a christian utakuwepo pamoja na mkristo so if you're a christian kama wewe ni mkristo and you want the things god can and and you and you keep wanting more no unataka zaidi 
you are putting yourself above God. Unajiweka juu zaidi ya Mungu. That is how serious it is. Hiyo ndiyo ilivyo ya maana kujua. So brothers and sisters. Wa Kristo our sufficiency is in god and that's what the, this hebrew author is telling them your sufficiency is in god god can give you even what you don't ask you don't ask hata you don't ask hata ujauliza let me give you a brief testimony like this one. just a few months ago i was not even asking hata sikuwa nauliza so Someone comes and says God told them to buy you a car. I said me or the bishop. Mimi ama askofu. Said you. Wewe. Not asking. Hata bila kuuliza. You are busy minding your own business. Wewe unashughulika mambo yako. Tell your neighbor be content. Ambia mtu shosheleka, tosheleka. Then they ask me. Which car do you want? Unataka gari aina gani? Hey, I look I said I want to a wish. Nataka <laughs> wish. So they go back. <laughs> then they come back and say, no, no, no. not a wish. Say another one. Say another bigger one. Tell your neighbor, God always gives you what you need. If you deal with greed, he will give you things you've not even asked for. But he himself knows that you need them. That's a bride of Christ. Are we together? So the Jewish Christians, the Hebrews, that, that, that the writer was talking or addressing himself to, You see, they were always in constant danger of losing their property. Because of persecution. The persecution including people would just come and take their property by force. And it would be seized. Just because they were Christians. So he's encouraging them. Instead of being anxious about what you lost or what was taken forcibly from, from you, just be confident that you have something better. A God who will neither leave you there, neither forsake you. A God who will never abandon you. A God who supplies to all your needs. A God who is your sufficiency. A God who never changes. And you know he was quoting from Psalm 118 verse 6. So believers under the protection of the Almighty. So I want us to stand on our feet. We've come to this end of our Bible exposition. But so important to the author were these issues that they will remain deeply embedded in their hearts. That they will never forget brotherly love that they are brothers and sisters regardless of their tribe or their social status what they know or they do not know in the kingdom brothers and sisters brotherly love he told them don't forget those who are strangers, those who, who uh, seem so far from you, those you don't even know, you don't even remember them, they are not in your circles, but God can use them as angels, as he did to Abraham. Then he said to them, do not forget those in prison. There are many that are in prison. Some in physical prisons. Some in emotional prisons. Some in spiritual prisons. Some are stuck. Love them. Reach, think about them. Care for them. As though you, you are self. Put yourself in their shoes. Put your them yourself in their shoes. Then he went on. And then he talked about 
about marriage. Because it has something to do with his, your relationship with the law. Remember sexual purity. If there's a man in your office, office that always makes some pass on you, you know, they come and you know there are people, it's one thing to tell somebody you're looking good. But there are those who say that and plant something. There are some people who carry that spirit of immorality. No, they carry it. It's in them. When they come near you, you can tell it. Make your stand. Are you getting me? You know you will never be loved by everybody. Did you know that? They will hate you. But it's okay. Jesus loves you. And he talks about money. The love of money. Be content with what you have. Oh God. And these things, have you realized? They are issues of the heart. All of them. Heart. His altar. Uh, Aha. Roho. Then he, then of course, he talks to them about that his presence will never leave them. He will always be with them until his second coming. Never. never. Even when you're in a pit, don't ask where were you going. He's always there. Whether you feel it or not. Even when you are on a date with someone, when you are behind the door in your bedroom, when we are on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. Let me tell you one more thing about last. You know, Instagram. Now, I'm not against these things. Now, you know, they are, we are preaching with them. Twitter. But have you noticed this thing of Sending your photo all the time, you know. And then, and then people are sending you likes. <laughs> yeah, they are not likes. I lust you. Because what are you showing? Are you showing your character? Are you telling them you know how I love God? No, no, no. no, no, no. Is your heart on display? Not, you're not saying, you know, I, I, I. I, I care for the things of God. Ah, it's your body. After this, I'm going to Nyeri. <laughs> You're wondering, go back to that in your village. Then you take Look at me. You are setting yourself up you are throwing these brothers you are setting them up and that makes us also think a little bit about how we dress are we saying something there so saying remain loyal remain loyal to the soon coming king because he's the bridegroom. Lift up your hands and worship him. And give him all the glory. And give him all the praise. Dedicate your heart. Dedicate the heart to him. Give him your all in all. Give him everything. Give him your heart. Give him your soul. Give him your soul. Give him everything. Have everything. Every part of my being. Where I've been greedy. Where I've been lustful. Where I've not controlled myself. Where I've been secretive. Where I've admired wrongly. Where I've not loved and brotherly love. Oh! I give you everything. Take it all, Jesus. You can have me. Have everything of me. Have my life to have my all. I'm content with you. It is you I need. It is you I love. It is you I'm after. I dedicate my marriage. I dedicate everything to walk honorably before you, King Jesus. And to you be all the praise. And to you be all the honor. Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. The soon coming king. Hallelujah.